Hey guys, this is Elias from Softly and today we're importing WooCommerce variable products using a CSV file and WPO import. Now uh, let's upload the file we're going to use. Alright, uh, now we need to select the WooCommerce products uh, option here from this drop down. Now I don't have any products here on this side, I'm going to show you real quick. Alright. So I'm going to choose new items, but you can choose existing items if you want to update existing products. Now let's continue to step two. And here we just need to uh, double check that WPL import is detecting all of the products and all of the data correctly. Now this seems to be the case. I want to show you real quick the CSV file we're using. Okay, here it is. And as you can see, we have uh, here the chest kangaroo hoodie and all of these are variations for that same product in different colors and sizes. Now, you will notice that uh, WPL import placed the header row here on the left column and the data of each row is on the right column. Now, uh, if I click here, you will see that we have the same data. So this is good. We have 2,008 rows. So let's get this imported by continuing to step three. Right, so here on step 3, we can see the same layout we saw in step 2, where we have the header columns on the left and the data in the right column. Now, the reason for this is because WPO import won't limit you to a specific uh, template or specific uh, file you need to use, but instead you can actually drag and drop the elements from this right panel into the import fields. Now, let's do that with the title. Just drag and drop it like this. And that's pretty much it, guys. You will notice that this is pretty much the same as if we were creating a product here in WooCommerce. I'm going to show you real quick. And we have the title, the description, the short description, and the product data. Now, this is the exact same we have here. So, as such, we just need to uh, do as if we were creating a product manually in WooCommerce and drag and drop the elements. Let's do that with the description the short description and that's it uh, now you can also do a lot of other things here uh, for example you could write static data like this and let's say i want to say this is a heading and it's going to be in color red all right so if i hit preview you will see here the title and we have the static data we placed and the description now you you can also place here multiple elements Let's uh, add a horizontal line here, and let's see, uh, let's play here the skew, all right? So there is really no limit for what you can do here. Let me preview so you can see. All right, this works. Uh, so let's continue with our import so I can show you other features when importing variable products. Now, uh, the first thing we're gonna do here in the WooCommerce add-on is to select variable products from this dropdown. Right, so you will notice that the variations tab uh, shows up, and this is good because this is where we'll link all of the variations from our CSV file. Now let's drag and drop the element, same as we did uh, above. Let's drag and drop the regular price. All right, and here we don't have any cell price uh, in our import file, but we could use another one of the WPL import functionalities, which is the ability to increase or decrease prices on the fly. Now to do that, let's click here where it says adjust prices. And we have basically two fields here, which is the regular price and the sell price. And we need to decide whether we want to increase the prices by an amount or by percentage. Now, if I hit preview, you will see that we only have the regular price, which is good, it's 52. Now, uh, if I place here, let's say uh, 15, well, it will show too because as I said, we can place here static data, but that will mean that all of the products will have 15 as the sell price and we don't want that. Let's drop the prices by 10% instead. Uh, now to do that, we need to place a value here on the sell price uh, field. So let's do that with the same regular price. Let me show you real quick. Uh, now they are the same, but uh, if I wanted to drop the prices by let's say 10%, I will need to place here on the sell price uh, 90, right? Because I want the sell price to, to be the 90% of whatever value I have here. If I wanted to, let's say, increase it, I will need to place 110%. Do 
just think on the 100% as the baseline and from there just go lower or higher and if you feel a little bit lost here just hover on this question mark and it will explain this to you in a little bit more detail now let's do that uh, so the sell price is going to be 10% uh, lower let's preview and as you can see now we have our sell price uh, let's continue now we have these settings we'll leave them as they are by default this is just uh, basic WooCommerce stuff you can find it here um, so let's continue with the inventory tab where we'll enable manage stock because we have here the stock element go and drop it for the low stock threshold uh, I want to say 3 that's good you can place here whatever number works for you and for the stock status I don't have any uh, stock status element here if I did I could select uh, set with expat and drag and drop that element uh, in that field but we don't have that so what do we do uh, we could select in stock and the issue with this will be that all of the products will be in stock even this one which has zero stock so if someone comes along and buys this product I will be in serious trouble because I will not be able to ship it because there is no stock so uh, what we can do is to let WP import the site automatically whether a product is on stock or not so let's select that option all right uh, now the settings will leave them as they are by default that's good let's jump into the shipping tab but we don't have any shipping information here in this file so let's just skip it same with the link products tab and jump into the attributes tab now this attributes tab uh, it's very important because guys you cannot create variable products without attributes you just can't in in WooCommerce WooCommerce won't allow you to do so so let's add our attributes which are size and color by adding here a new row and type in size and color all right now we need to add uh, the values and these values need to be separated with a pipe so let's run and drop those all right that's good and here we're pretty much ready uh, we have here some other options you're welcome to just uh, take a peek but they are basically the same you can find in WooCommerce this is whether you want to create variations for this attribute or not this is whether you want this attribute to be visible in the front end or not and this is whether you want to create this attribute as a taxonomy or not so you're welcome to play with this uh, you have here some advanced options too so just uh, keep that in mind and we will just continue here we have the ability to link all of the variations and this is basically the same you can find in WooCommerce where you can just combine all of the attributes and generate individual variants from all possible combination of them uh, this is the same when I click here you will notice that the variations tab disappears and the reason for that it's because uh, if we will just combine all of this and generate variations from that well we just don't need the variations tab right um, so I'll disable this because this is not what we want to do uh, as I showed you before we have here in this file we have all of the variations we want to create so let's do that by jumping in into the variations tab so here uh, what you need to do basically is just uh, read these titles right and check out these example images when you find an image and a title that describes uh, the structure from your file well you just use that and drag and drop the elements for example uh, let's choose this one right here so this option says all variations for a particular product have the same title as the parent product so we have here the, the product title uh, field and in the example image below you can see that we have here this parent product and it has the same titles as its variations same with these lamp chops here so if your file structure looks like this just drag and drop the title here and WPL import will understand this and import your variations correctly now it's very important to read the titles carefully because uh, this option right here and this other one are very similar all right so we have here all variations for a particular product have the same title but there are no parent products and this is subtle but important because the way you set up your variations here will determine how WPL import will understand like oh so uh, these guys are variations and I need to place them inside this parent 
So yeah, guys, this is this is very simple, but it can get tricky. So if you feel a little bit lost here, just don't worry about it. Uh, contact our support team, send us your file, and we'll be happy to help you. Now, uh, the option that resembles the most to the structure we're using is this first one, because we have the SQ element and we have the parent SQ element. I wanna show you here on the file real quick. We have here the SQ element where all of these products have an, basically an unique identifier that's unique for each row. Now, uh, this parent product doesn't have any parent because that same element is the parent, but these ones have this queue for that element. So WPL import will understand like, oh, so these are the children from this guy and link them all together. Um, so let's continue with our import. Let's run and drop the SQ here and the parent here. That's good. Now let's scroll down and these settings will leave them as they are and these settings too. But this here is an important one, which is the ability to create products with no variations as simple products. So for the most cases, you want to keep this enabled, but if you don't want that, just disable that. Uh, it won't hurt you. So we have here everything ready. Uh, we have our title, the descriptions, all of the product data. So let's jump into the images tab. So this images tab is very straightforward. If your files are hosted in an external server, just work with the download images hosted elsewhere setting and drag and drop the element like this. Now uh, you'll notice here, it will give you some instructions. You can either place each URL in a separate line or you can separate them with a comma. Uh, my file here has the images separated with a comma, but yours may be different. So if your file is maybe using a semicolon, just change that. If your file is using a pipe, do the same. Uh, ours here is using a comma, so let's use that and hit preview. So as you can see here, WPL import detected all of the URLs and uh, let's run the test to confirm whether they can be downloaded and they can. So this is good. This is always a good idea to test this. Uh, so let's dismiss this. Uh, you have another couple of options here for importing your images, uh, but we'll cover that in another video. So I leave a link in the description below if you want to learn more about what all of this stuff does. For now, just hover on the question mark and it will explain a little bit further of what that option does. Now let's continue. Uh, we have here the custom fields uh, tab. We're, we're gonna just skip that. Uh, we have here the taxonomies tab. Let's enable the product categories. All right. And here we have this category, which has a hierarchical structure. But there is not only the greater than symbol here. We also have a pipe. And what this pipe is doing is separating these two uh, hierarchy groups. So we can import this in WPL import by selecting this third option here and enabling this that says an element in my file contains the entire hierarchy. So let's drag and drop that here. And since our element has two different groups of hierarchies, uh, if I hit preview here, you will see that it's not uh, organizing them correctly. So to fix that, enable this option right here that says separate hierarchy groups via symbol. All right. And you can see that by default is a pipe, but you can change that to whatever uh, it's on your file. So let's preview here. And now it looks good. This looks great. So let's dismiss this and continue with the next tab. We have here some other product options, which are basic WordPress stuff. This is the post status, the post dates, comments and whatnot. So I'm just gonna skip all of that because the default values work for us. We have here, of course, the function editor, which is very powerful, guys, because if you know PHP, you can just write your functions here and manipulate your data however you see fit. There is almost no limit to what you can do here. Now, uh, scrolling down a little bit further, we have the save settings as a template functionality. Now, this is very cool if you're someone that needs to basically run the same import over and over and over again, but maybe different files or whatever. So you can just uh, save all of what we did here, all of this. You can save it as a template like this. Uh, let's put it a name, WPL import example. And the next time you want to uh, run this import, uh, click here on load template 
and load your template and WPL import will populate all of this uh, with the elements. Just keep that in mind that the elements here do need to be the same because otherwise WPL import won't be able to find them. So uh, let's continue to step four. And here we just need to basically click on the auto attack button. And for the most cases, WPL import will be able to detect uh, the right unique identifier for us. What you want with this unique identifier, it's well, that that's unique, that each row has uh, a specific combination or specific uh, element that makes it unique. That won't be the same for another one here. Uh, so what WPL import shows for us here is a combination for the name, the SQ, the attribute one, which is the size, and the attribute two, which is the color. Now, this is a truly unique value, so this will work for us. I will leave a link in the description below for this, so you know how to choose it manually. Uh, and also, I will leave a link in the description below for the taxonomies and the function editor, because those settings are very commonly used, so just check out the description below. Uh, these settings will leave them as they are too. You can hover on the question mark, same as before, and it will explain to you what they do. And I will leave a link in the description below for the scheduling options too, because this is a very requested feature in WPL import with WooCommerce imports or exports. Now let's continue and run our import. All right, so this will take a minute or two. So I'll just pause the video here and come back when it's ready. All right, so that only took a couple of minutes. Let's check out if our import came in okay. And as you can see, we have now 191 products, which is the number we expected. Uh, all of this looks good. Let's take a peek in the front end of the site where we have this beautiful website and we can see that the images are here. The titles, the all of the prices seems to be okay. Uh, let's just open this product up and see what's going on. All right, so we have the SQ here, we have the categories, the title, the price is here also, of course, with the sale price we created artificially on the flight with WPL import. That's here too, which is great. Uh, we have here our product short description, some variations. We have the static data we placed and the product description and also the SQ here. Now we have here some attributes all of the images and if I select a uh, variation you will notice that the SQ changes same as the image which is great because if I select a red hoodie we have the red image blue hoodie blue image green hoodie green image same with the SQ now let's uh, see what's going on in the edit product page and here we have uh, our title we have the images we have of course our description the SQ, all of the variations with which are 15, right? That's great, this is great guys. So yeah guys, this is how you import WooCommerce variable products using a CSV file and of course, WPL import. Now, I really hope you like this video and if you wanna learn more about how to import or export other WooCommerce data like orders, products, uh, reviews, and whatnot, just check out the other videos in our channel or go to our website at wpolimport.com. See you next time.